Good day guys. So today's quick video is a follow on from the Vickers Medium Cruiser Mark 1 video in which we mentioned the VAPT or the Vickers Armoured Patrol Tank or to give it a more common name, the Vickers 13 Tanner. This was a small light vehicle designed for India by Vickers as a rival to the AMX 13 but over the years it's been forgotten with some interesting if not incorrect theories in books and forums. The project for the VAPT began around 1964 when the Indian Army requested several vehicles for its tank corps. They'd already been given the Vickers main battle tank which was being developed for them and would go on to become one of the UK's biggest tank exports under the localised name of Vigianta. However many other vehicles were also drawn up from anti-aircraft vehicles, tank destroyers and so forth. Sadly many of the plans were all but lost until recently. The requirement for a light tank was also issued this was designed to operate in areas unsuitable for heavier vehicles as India's terrain varies massively, consisting of large areas of swampy ground, high mountain passes, narrow roads, deserts and regular terrain. Thus any vehicle needed would need to have a low weight, good gun elevation features, an engine that could operate in low oxygen environments and be narrow enough to use the paths provided, yet be simple to operate and have a small logistical footprint. The Indian military wanted a tracked vehicle that would be the eyes and ears in forward terrain, yet still be able to engage armour, both light tanks and heavy vehicles, if the situation was justified, and also engage dug-in infantry. This led them to two main competitors, France with the AMX-13 and the UK. The AMX-13 had been designed in 1946 to meet French requirements for an air portable support vehicle and the first prototypes were ready in 1948. The light machine weighed around 13 to 14 tonnes and is characterised by its distinct oscillating turret. This allowed it to fit a selection of powerful guns in a very small profile. The original 75mm gun was loaded by an automatic loading system fed by two six round drum magazines located on either side of the loading mechanism in the turret's bustle. This magazine system gave the AMX 12 ready rounds available in the drum, which allowed a quick, rapid fire. Once the magazines were spent, however, the vehicle would need to retreat to a safe position to reload the drums from outside the vehicle. Therefore, it was designed for a series of quick hit-and-run attacks and not a prolonged engagement. The vehicle would be upgraded into dozens of variants and submarks over the course of its life, and used in a wide variety of roles from bridge layers and anti-aircraft systems to guided missile platforms and even self-propelled guns. The downside to the vehicle, apart from its limited ammunition, which meant a choice between anti-armor rounds and anti-infantry, lay with the gun elevation and depression. The gun depression is fair at about minus eight or so, but the elevation is terrible as oscillating turrets have difficulties elevating the fixed guns without the bustle hitting the back decks. The 75mm gun fitted to the AMX-13, although while fairly effective, is not suitable for trading shots with real tanks at a range that they can also clobber you back, and historically every time AMX-13s have tried to play the game with the big boys, they've been sent back home with a thick ear. Thus Vickers decided to make their own vehicle from scratch. They had already been working on the Vickers medium cruiser tanks in 1954, and the suspension from this carried over with parts onto the FV-421 and later FV-430 series. They set to designing a tank of similar weight, 13 tonnes, that would have all the features India wanted, yet be cheap to own and operate. This led to design 508 t in 1964 at Vickers Ellswick. They chose to use off-the-shelf components from stuff in service to lower the cost. And so although the hull was new, the suspension carried over and the turret was a modified version of that used on the Saladin armoured car. Asked the vehicles to have a dual role of being able to engage infantry, light tanks and main battle tanks, they kept the proven L5A1 76mm gun equipped with Hesh rounds, as this was light, easily able to destroy soft armour and was yet effective against any infantry it came across. To supplement the firepower they added four swing fire missiles to either side in adjustable launch boxes to allow the vehicle to engage heavy armour. Swingfire was also unique in its ability to fly at very weird angles and engage targets out of the line of sight with careful handling, which would have been ideal in high vertical mountain areas. The turret for the Saladin did not require a particularly large turret ring, and this would be helpful in keeping the width of the vehicle down and the height low. A good maximum elevation on the gun 
and adequate gun depression would also allow it to engage targets in difficult terrain. So Vickers were fairly happy with the firepower options, but the next problem was the engine and mobility. They were not worried about the suspension as much as the high altitude the vehicle might need to operate in, as tank engines can be particularly prone to sulking in low oxygen environments. Typically an engine loses 3% of its power per thousand foot above sea level, and India's borders have more narrow mountain passes than Middle Earth. Thus, at an average of 17,000 foot, any conventional engine would lose 51% of its power. Vickers chose to build an engine that would operate with no power loss up to 15,000 foot, and then only a 6% loss at the highest range. Sadly, we don't know if they ever built the engine in full, as that's not recorded, but it's likely their expertise in aircraft engine manufacturing helped. This engine would be paired with a Leyland 4-speed gearbox and Clectrack steering to a rear sprocket for a top speed of 40 miles per hour at sea level with torsion bar suspension. The last part was protection and this was deemed by Vickers of least importance. Thus the armour is at best 30mm on the turret and 20mm elsewhere. Enough to stop small arms fire and splinters but not much else. The rest of the vehicle is fairly standard. A three man crew consisting of a commander, driver and gunner the commander also doubled up as the loader and was provided with a fully rotating cupola with six episcopes, full round vision and a separate scope for the guided weapons. The driver's position mounted centre forwards could drive either with the front hatch open or in a closed down condition with a wide angle periscope. And the gunner has a single periscope and one rotating sight. The VAPT was to have a series of variants and versions of itself. These included a fully amphibious turreted version with no need for preparation before entering the water as well as a turretless version to be used in the role of an APC. However, she would never go into production. It's possible India wanted the tank as soon as possible, and they had had some concerns with Vickers dragging its feet in the past. Or it could have been that the UK said they were not allowed any of the new shiny missiles, and this would have drastically cut its capability. Both India and Pakistan ended up using the AMX-13 in the long run, to mixed effect. And the VAPT remains an interesting topic. Well guys, I hope you liked that. So there's not that many pictures, being only three, which is three more than existed online before this video, I suppose. If you did like the video, give it a shout and a share, a like, or hit that notification button, or pop over and join us on Discord. And until next time, toodle pip.